Many games out there look incredible when they come out, but they do something very specific, and it doesn't age well. Maybe they're the first instance of that technology, maybe they represent the big jump, but it's right at the beginning of that curve. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 groundbreaking games that look terrible now. Starting off at number 10, it's L.A. Noir. Published by Rockstar and released in 2011, L.A. Noir has one of the most realistic and detailed depictions of Los Angeles of all time. The amount of work the designers and artists put into bringing this city to life deserves to be commended because in many ways, it still looks really good today. There's just one big, glaringly obvious thing that dates the game, and it's the faces. Compared to 1990 to 2000 and 2001 to 2010, our current generation hasn't seen quite the same massive jumps in graphics quality like previous ones have. But one thing that's really, really improved is performance capture. Faces look more realistic than ever in games in the past few years, and a big reason for that is how developers are able to capture and replicate an actor's performance in a game. It almost looks seamless nowadays, but in L.A. Noir, the limitations of the technology are clear is a kind word. It was obviously way ahead of its time in 2011, but now you can see the flaws so easily. Uh, firstly, the facial capture doesn't exactly match up. There's a weird blurriness in the animation, and there's the oddly solid hair. It's also pretty obvious the faces and the motion capture were done separately, which adds to the uncanniness of the whole thing. The actual acting, really solid. Pretty much everyone involved really does the job, especially considering how difficult it had to have been. They have this crazy device strapped to them, but the developers also encouraged overacting to make it obvious when someone was lying, so it, it it is ridiculous sometimes. You keep your mouth shut for today and I don't take you in. Do we have a deal? Do I have a choice? With L.A. Noir, all you really have to do is look at it. To anyone not accustomed to the game's style, it's off-putting and very strange. Revolutionary though back in 2011, but crazy dated now. And number 9 is Demon Souls from 2009. In 2022, From Software released one of the biggest games of the year with Elden Ring. Absolutely massive, it shattered all previous sales records the studio had, and it's been around a long time, since 1986. But their first real breakthrough hit was Demon Souls, and man, compared to the recent output, oof, rough, very rough. Environments are gray, barren, and empty looking. Faces don't animate at all. Movement animations are janky and stiff. It was not an amazing looking game, even when it came out. But what it did have was atmosphere, just this relentlessly oppressive and uninviting feeling everywhere you went that worked actually pretty well with the sparse graphics. There's a reason a lot of people still prefer the PS3 original compared to the PS5 remaster. Some of it's nostalgia, but you also can't deny the original game does have a certain creepiness about it. It's uh, the reason why this one isn't higher on the list, actually. Demon Souls is by account an incredibly influential game, not just for being the genesis of the Soulsborne genre, but for its online interactions, too. Its origins are very humble, and in some spots, the graphics are pretty bad, even when you try to give the game the benefit of the doubt. But there's this certain weird style about it. And of course, like every other aspect of the game is so revolutionary, it actually kind of holds up a little better than some of the other games on this list. Have a look at that treasure down in the pit. Then we'll work out a way to fish it out. <laughs> And number eight is Kill Switch. Three years before Gears of War, we got Namco's Kill Switch, mostly forgotten today, but it was a game that introduced third-person cover shooters as they are understood now, and the game that Gears of War creator Cliffy B says is the direct inspiration for the franchise along with Resident Evil 4. It's not the game that invented cover shooters, but it is the one that tried to incorporate the mechanic into a third-person shooter, along with adding the key innovation of blind fire while in cover. It's a game with a great mechanic, but not a lot else going for it. It's like the perfect example of a forgettable mid 2000s shooter. The protagonist is incredibly generic, the environments are barren and ugly to say the least, nothing stands out and nothing looks good. It wasn't terrible back in 2003, but time has not been kind to this one, and it's a game that's really hard to go back to, especially due to the visuals. But also, like, again, the mechanic is kind of really all it has going for it. Like the story, mm, not there. It's, it's just generic shooter stuff. The location's empty. You've seen them before. You've seen them again. Some of these areas are so anonymous that it's easy to get lost in them, even though the game's progression is basically a straight line. It, it was only ever an okay game that's gotten significantly worse with the passage of time. 
And number seven is Operation Flashpoint Cold War Crisis from 2001. Any game that's trying to emulate reality is going to eventually become outdated because a, a game has got to have a distinct style or something beautiful about it to fall back on. If it doesn't, it's going to get overshadowed by bigger and better things eventually. Reality always looks like reality, but games trying to look like reality look like the current year. Operation Flashpoint is one of those types of games, and it gets hit especially hard on that front, even though it was one of the biggest innovators at its time. This is far from the first large-scale military shooter, but it was the first to have any decent kind of presentation. Milsims were <laughs> ugly back in the day, like seriously, and this was the one that was considered cutting edge. One of its biggest innovations was it had actual iron sights that you aimed, an innovation Call of Duty would really take and run with, but that's hardly the most impressive thing about about this game, the attention to realism really did make it stand out, but calling it, it realistic is, it's laughable now. The models are super basic, they're not animated well compared to how they would be now, environments are massive, but they do not look good, they're really basic and empty by today's standards, and the presentation, while slick then, is clunky as hell now. It's an important game that's been entirely replaced by its sequels and spiritual successor, the Arma games, and there's very little reason to revisit this one outside its significance significance in video game history, cause yeah, look at it. And number six is Nier from 2010. 2010 was uh, the year of some pretty great looking games like Mass Effect 2, Red Dead Redemption, Alan Wake, and Super Mario Galaxy 2. And, and most of those games still hold up to a fair standard today, graphics wise. Nier, it near doesn't. Uh, but make no mistake, this game was considered ugly when it came out. The main character was a weird looking lump of flesh. World design was washed out, lacking in detail and empty, while somehow being simultaneously cramped and small. Uh, the frame rate was pretty rough. Uh, it's ugly. There's just no denying that. And even though it still manages to get by with some interesting visuals now and then, and it does have a unique style to it uh, that mostly came from the soundtrack. Like it's a game where the environments look like they came from the Nintendo 64 sometimes. And like we were several console generations out from there. The gameplay was also kind of sloppy and repetitive. The graphics were really rough, but what really made Nier innovative was the storytelling. It was just gripping and completely unique for the time. There's all this fourth wall breaking and playing the game over and over in order to actually progress in the game. That stuff became popular on the back of this game. And while the actual gameplay didn't impress, the story it told ended up being really influential on the few people who actually played it. Unlike Demon's Souls, where there's some disagreement on which game is the definitive version, the original or remake, with Nier, it's pretty safe to recommend the remake over the original. You still get all the stuff that people like, but they took out a lot of the jank. Like, the combat's way more like Nier Automata. Graphics are a lot better. Uh, don't bother with the original. It was rough back in 2010 and it is way worse now. And number five is EverQuest before World of Warcraft, which was the name in massively multiplayer online games. EverQuest was a huge leap for gaming, uh, an entire 3D world populated by thousands of other people all playing the same game at the same time. It was amazing in 1999, but oh, it looks rough now. Interface, clunky. World, empty and boxy. Thick fog, Nintendo 64-like. That sounds like I'm really using it as an insult. And it, I kind of am, but like, it's worth keeping in mind that EverQuest existed at the same time as the Nintendo 64, so maybe it's a little more forgivable, but oh, it's there. That fog is there. Then, like, look at the characters, too. I don't know what I need to say. Basic to the extreme, right? The thing I remember most about playing this one back in the day was just how massive everything felt, which was a double-edged sword. It made the game feel like a legitimate world, more so than anything else out there at the time, but it wasn't a question if you would get lost. It was a question when you would get lost. Like, getting from one side of a city to another took forever and good luck finding any stores. Oh, um, also, if you ever remember having to wait for a ship to cross the ocean, it's like World of Warcraft ship waiting, but way worse. Th like, seems like thousands of times worse. It's not World of Warcraft with its clean interface. Uh, there's an easy to use map in World of Warcraft, comprehensive level design, you know, visual differentiation between things in the world that just wasn't there in EverQuest. And the lack of slickness sometimes makes it feel more immersive and real because the real world isn't always slick but it mostly it, it made it a huge pain to play the funny thing is that for 
for the most part, people didn't care how ugly the game looked. They still really loved it. And today, people are playing it, albeit in a highly modified form. The EverQuest of 2023 still looks pretty rough, but not 1999 EverQuest rough. And number four is The Witcher from 2007. Another game that got very good reviews, but was dinged for its visuals even back when it came out. Witcher just isn't a good looking game. The characters are weird looking, especially, you know, you, Geralt, the person you see more than anybody else. Uh, he has this weird lizard man thing going on and wow, do you notice it all the time. The areas are all cramped and ugly in this weirdly over detailed Euro jank kind of way. I don't know how to describe it, but if you played enough games from the Eastern block, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They, they go harder than current technology allows and then have to scale it back, I think. I think they still do it today, like Cyberpunk. Follow the bugs in Cyberpunk when it launched, holy. Any, anyway, this wasn't a game that was groundbreaking because of the gameplay. Like, the combat was pretty clunky, menus were kind of a mess, but it's a more grounded dark fantasy brand style of storytelling that ended up being hugely influential. And basically, any RPG where you have to make hard choices is at least somewhat influenced by the first Witcher game or influenced by a game that was influenced by the first Witcher game. It's one of those games where you had to get past the graphics even in 2007 which was hard then, and it is harder now. On release, the graphics also weren't the worst of the game's problems. The English translation was notoriously crappy. The game was just filled with bugs. The eventual enhanced edition fixed a lot of problems with the original, like adding in a bunch of new animations, adding in NPC models, fixed the script, but it was still pretty ugly at that point. It's not like it got good. It got not as bad. It's becoming pretty common with these types of incredibly important but increasingly inaccessible games. Uh, this one's getting a remake, and as long as it keeps the general story beats, it'll probably be good because pretty much everything else can go. And number three is Deus Ex from the year 2000. This all-time great RPG slash FPS is one of the godfathers of the immersive sim genre, along with basically any game that's a hybrid RPG, but time has not been kind to Deus Ex. Like a lot of the stuff on this list, it was kind of considered ugly even at the time, not quite as much as some of the other games on this list. It did have impressively large environments for the year 2000, but for a game that's meant to be immersive, the environmental details could be laughable in the year 2000. 2000. One thing that really doesn't hold up are the facial animations, or rather the lack of them. When characters talk, they basically have two states, an open mouth and a closed mouth, and the game just cycles between them, and it looks worse than South Park. Like, South Park looks intentionally bad, and they have a bunch of different mouth states, but uh, yeah, doesn't help that some of the voice acting is pretty laughably bad, too. Thankfully, if you want to come back to this one but struggle with the visuals, there's actually a lot of ways to enhance the game if you're not afraid of a little modding, and there's multiple multiple mods that improve the game in a lot of ways to make it feel a little more modern. Like, it's not ever going to look new, but at least it doesn't look as old. And number two is Tomb Raider from 1996. I didn't want to go back too far with this list because otherwise I'd just be listing Atari and NES games. And that seems kind of pointless because of course that stuff looks like crap now. So even though the very first Tomb Raider game came out way back in 1996, I think it deserves a special mention on this list because it's one of the most influential and successful game franchises of all time. Uh, but those original games are some of the ugliest games of their era. Depending on who you ask, it's a really ugly time for games. 3D gaming was the hot new thing. Uh, it was an innovation and stuff changed on an almost daily basis. In the same year, we got Tomb Raider. We also got Quake, Duke Nukem 3D, Crash Bandicoot, Mario 64. Like it was a crazy year filled with legendary games. But out of all of them, Tomb Raider's probably the ugliest. And um, there's a few obvious reasons. Uh, the environments are a big one. They were built on a grid, so they're all boxy, abstract, and empty looking. Uh, they aren't the only big ones that are boxy, abstract, and empty looking though. Lara Croft is gaming's original sex symbol, but you'd never really know looking at her bizarre alien model in game. And it really doesn't look a lot better in the cutscenes. Everything looks awkward, empty, and dark. And combine that with the, the tank controls. Ooh, 
maybe you got the ultimate you had to be there game because coming back to it in 2023 is a struggle like it is a legendary game that does deserve all of the recognition that it gets I i'm not dumping on this game at all it was an innovation in so many it basically invented the third person shooter genre as we know it today right so many of that game's conventions the platforming uh, not the tank controls but the look i mean third person shooting all descends from that game in some way ugly as hell though and finally, at number one, The Elder Scrolls Oblivion from 2006. I remember being so hyped for this game back when it came out and thinking it was really amazing looking, too. I don't think there's any game out there that had a bigger fall in public perception when it comes to graphics. Nowadays, the only reason we talk about Oblivion's graphics is to say how ugly the potato-faced NPCs are, uh, talk about how bad the draw distance is, how oversaturated and undercooked the open world is. Like, Oblivion's the ultimate example of an ugly game from the mid-2000s for many people. But back when it first came out, it was revolutionary. The visuals were truly next-gen, it had full voice acting, the world was massive, it had flora, it had fauna. It was amazing to behold. We hadn't seen anything like this. Technology has improved pretty quickly after its release, though. Like, once character models and RPGs got better and games started to have longer draw distances, wow, did the crack show in this game. Now, what hurt Oblivion, probably the most, most was that it was going for a more realistic art style rather than Morrowind's more stylized world. With Morrowind, yeah, the world is like gray and desolate, but it added to the atmosphere. While Oblivion is a world meant to be bright and colorful and vibrant in a way that nature can actually be and doesn't quite pull it off. The characters never looked great exactly, but it was a huge RPG, so we cut it a lot of slack back in the day. Now it's it's a lot harder to ignore how rubber-faced and weird everybody in this game looks. The funny thing is that people have a hard time coming back to this game compared compared to the older game in the series, Morrowind, but that's how things shook out. It's uh, it's just not aged as well. It's still a great game in a lot of ways too. It, like any Bethesda game, you can improve it with mods, but out of everything on this list, I can't think of a game that had a more precipitous fall than Oblivion. When it came out, it was considered one of the most beautiful games of all time, and these days it's often called one of the ugliest. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.